I started, you know, hanging out with um, the people in the neighborhood. I started doing petty crimes, burglaries, robberies. And then, you know, I participated in a robbery that resulted in a homicide. I was sentenced to 20 to life. I was 19. My name is Terrell Muhammad. I've been incarcerated at one time in New York State Correctional Facilities for 26 years and 11 months. In prison, I had a lot of negative experience with correction officers. And it was mainly the further up north I went. Now, I'm not used to no one calling me a nigger to my face. And they will call you that as if it's insignificant. And they expect you to tolerate it and accept it. I'm not that type of person. So I would stand my ground. And a lot of times standing my ground caused me to take some ass whoopings. They used to give you eight minutes for a shower. At the time, I had dreadlocks. So it takes, at that time, it took like around five minutes to wash my hair. You know, I'm in there for eight minutes. They cut the, sh the water off by a timer, and I got suds in my hair on my body. So they're telling me to leave. I said, well, I can't leave. I'm still got suds on me. Sergeant comes. Sergeant said, you got to leave. You got to come. I said, Sergeant, look, I got soap on me. I'm not coming out. Just put the water on for a minute so I can rinse off. He refused. No one wants the reason. He come in there and try to grab me. We started wrestling. Maybe 100 officers came. And they came in there, and I'm naked. They beat me from the shower, throw me down the stairs, face first, handcuff. Then being dragged by the handcuffs on your face and with your feet being dragged through a gauntlet of officers, and everybody's hitting you with the batons. They're hitting you so much with the batons that you can't feel them no more because your body gets numb, and your body is swolled up now. I wanted to stop. Please don't kill me. This is what's the fear, what most people fear, to be murdered and killed in prison, and no one know what happens. Say it's a snowstorm, and you're in your home, but you can't go into the living room, and you can't go into the kitchen or the bedroom. You can find to your bathroom and you're confined there for six months, even when the snow go away. You usually, when we have a snowstorm, after three days, we get cabin fever. Everybody wants to get out the house. Solitary confinement, there's no getting out. You're stuck. Much as you can get cabin fever, much as you want to get and explore other areas and see other things, it's not going to happen. You know, you don't even know when you lose your mind, when the reality of your circumstances now become something of a fantasy world because now you're looking at the wall and the paint chips on the wall look like figurines. And you're looking at the figurines and now you're saying, oh, that look like Abraham Lincoln. And then you want to have a conversation with Abraham Lincoln. And then you're saying to yourself, well, that's not Abraham Lincoln, stop it, cut it out. And you're battling yourself for your sanity, see? And it's a hell of a battle. I wanted to do something about the circumstances, and I just couldn't. I was powerless to do so. 